things can go two ways. I'll, I'll take one film I did about uh, two years ago, and this was on a group of American sailors who took boats to Palestine in 1947, and they rescued various people on the way. The idea had been in my mind for a long, long time. I knew that group existed, or did it exist? First of all, I went out to find out, did any of these sailors from this almost piratical expedition in the 40s, were they alive? Yes, they were. Then my process was to interview a number of them to get their stories, do as much historical research as I could. So I had the great historical background, then I had the few sailors. Then my process was begin to think, how could I structure that film? Now, there had actually been 10 boats that went from America to Palestine in 47. My first idea was to do all the story of all the boats. Wrong idea. I sent it on one ship, I should say. One ship, tell that story. I then got the process of doing as much research as I could. I read a couple of volumes in the British Naval Academy. I found somebody's thesis on that period. I went and did the interviews. Then, after about three or four months doing that, I started to lay down on paper roughly the outline of the film. And I did a very, very rough ideas and a very rough narration where the film wanted to go. After that, it was dead easy, except for raising the money. After this, the process was raising the money. I had my own camera. I went out, started doing interviews, raised some money from various foundations started raising money from individuals. I used a process in America whereby if people give money for a film to a non-profit foundation, they get a tax write-off. So I knew that. So if I went to people for money in America, I'd say, look, give me $100. From that $100, you'll get $60 back as a tax benefit. So I raised money from foundations. I raised money from friends. Um, I raised money from general donors. The film was on the way. Shot some of it. I put together a promo. Started sending that around. I went to a film pitching session in Barcelona. Now, I'm very wary of these film pitching sessions. My sense, at least with some of them, is that where a lot of commissioning editors come to with their girlfriends, great. Yeah, they'll attend a few pitching sessions, they'll go to the rainforest with their girlfriends, having left their wives at home. I'm being a bit cynical, but that was the first pitching session I ever saw in Australia. Years ago, that's what happened. And occasionally I look at the films, and my feeling had been that very few of those pitching sessions actually bring recommendations from commissioners to make the film. So I went to Bar I've been to Barcelona, or to a place called Sitges, about three times. This was my third pitch there. Normally I'd pitched various ideas with a wonderful, wonderful pitch. You know, you learn how to pitch. Terrific pitch. No, but it's not for us. You get used to it. Here, on the film about the sailors, luckily, Arte liked it. Arte, which is the French company. I followed that up, and lo and behold, they put some money into it. Wow. Oh happiness on the way. And having got that first amount, the second and the third amount is easier. And then making the film was dead, a very easy film to make. I knew where I was going. The people were interesting. Dynamic characters. I'm look, always looking for charismatic characters. Went beautifully. Film finished. Went out to a few festivals on TV. I was happy. That one probably took about a year and a half. Um, some occasional interviews during that year but mostly money raising. And always, I, I tend to put the ratio of about two-thirds of your time raising the money. And while you're raising your money, you're actually doing the research, and probably a third or a quarter of your time actually making your film and editing it. Editing it. First real film, I was scrabbling around. I was living in England. I was working as a lawyer and doing films on the side. And a friend came to me and said, uh, do you want to do a film in Israel? That was my first introduction to it. I said, well, yeah, sounds, sounds interesting. Uh, have we got a camera? Yes, we've got a Bolex 
100 foot spool camera. Takes two and a half or three minutes. And uh, this guy, my friend Pete said, and I managed to collect ends from the BBC. He worked from the BBC. And when the cameramen were shooting 400 foot rolls, they finish up with 50 feet unused. So Peter collected 50 feet here, 70 feet here. And we decided to go to Israel with about uh, 4,000 feet, which we'd collected in that way, and a Bolex camera. We went to the Israeli embassy. We put out visiting cards that said, World Television Documentaries. I mean, there was Peter and myself with no money, but well, why not if you're going for it? And the embassy said, well, we come to Israel, because they very little filmmaking then. Or oh, we'll help you with a car, maybe if you want to fly somewhere in a hotel. Great. We went there, and after about two weeks filming, we made a film about water and deserts. Very simple film, black and white, in which uh, we used a friend from the BBC to do the commentary. It was sold to the BBC. That was the first film, half an hour. Simple. Um, naive and just jumping off the board. And th the process today, you know, 20, 30 years later, is so totally different. I mean, uh, you, you just can't compare them. I would even start with that. If I make a documentary, <clears throat> very often I use as small a crew as possible. Very often I'm the camera person, mainly because I can't afford to employ a, a good camera. I'm not the world's greatest, but I'm okay. So it's normally myself, maybe the sound man. And would you like, so this is a two-person crew. And that was on, basically, on the last film, the one on the sailors. <coughs> Doing the docudrama, you're involving a crew, crew and actors of about 60 or 70 on the shoot. So you're in totally different territory. And it's, you know, it's two, two totally different worlds and your organisation and your thinking is very different. That's very interesting. You ask, are the budgets higher? And I've done, I've done films for PBS in New York, public television, where the budget for a documentary has been seven or eight hundred thousand. And that was one I did maybe ten years ago. And now I find for the docudrama, I'm working more or less around the same budget. Which means I have to sort of think about it much, much more carefully. Working for PBS, the money was just wasted here and there. And, uh, you know, somebody who was a star who was presenting it, he had to get, a, he had to get an enormous amount. And uh, there had to be overheads for PBS, for the station. Here, on the docudrama I'm doing at the moment, everything has been very, very carefully budgeted to the last cent um, to make it work.